Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Skyrim is a land filled with all sorts of strange and intriguing locations. However, one of the most mysterious places our travels can ever lead us to is the Cavern of Blackreach. An absolutely massive subterranean underworld that thousands of years ago was a bustling center of dwarven civilization. Not only did Blackreach serve as the site of one of the largest Dwemer cities ever constructed, but it also linked numerous other cities together as well. One can imagine in its heyday, Blackreach had thousands and thousands of deep elves roaming about it at any given time. Alas, after the dwarves disappeared in the first era, this place was almost entirely abandoned, and over the next few thousand years, fell into disrepair and obscurity. By the time the events of Skyrim take place, few people in the world even know Blackreach exists. And its only inhabitants are some still-functioning Dwemer machines that the race left behind, and the descendants of their former goblin slaves. Nonetheless, as you can see, there is still much beauty in this place. Anyway, despite this rather straightforward story that we're presented with, a lot about this location is left unexplained. Or was left unexplained, but we'll get to that later. And I mean a lot. It's home to a unique species of red Nernroot called Crimson Nernroot that's more powerful than the normal kind, and has a different hum to it as well. If that's not odd enough, there's also numerous books that can be found in certain parts of the place that were written AFTER the disappearance of the Dwemer, despite them being in areas that no modern people had visited. How'd they get here? And then, there's two weird creatures in Blackreach that shouldn't be. These are actually very important for the context of this video. The first is a dragon named Volfiriol, which players can encounter if they use an unrelenting force shout on the large artificial sun at the center of the cavern. Then, there's a single giant we can find, just wandering around the dungeon's roads aimlessly. He's largely passive, but if you encroach on his personal circle, he'll turn hostile. Now, let's take a moment to question how these fellows got down here. Blackreach has been virtually abandoned since the first era, having been visited only by a very small number of explorers. And the only way to enter is via these elevator-like Dwemer contraptions, called Great Lifts, that bring you down. Which neither giant nor dragon is probably capable of operating. Heck, let's be honest with ourselves, there's no way a Dova managed to cram itself in one of those tubes and then wiggle its way down into the cavern here, especially not with all the hostile Falmer and machines. That just didn't happen. In fairness, bearing in mind that dragons can literally live forever, and the fact that we're not quite sure what a giant's lifespan is, but it's probably quite long, some have proposed that maybe these critters were brought down here by the Dwemer themselves, and have just been chilling since their disappearance. Maybe they were used for experimentation, or just simple allies of the Deep Folk. This theory too, I find quite unlikely. I mean, I doubt the dwarves would have appreciated a dragon flying around in one of their most populated cities. If they wanted to keep a dragon somewhere, it wouldn't have been here. And there's still the question of how the heck they'd get these things down here. Another idea worth considering is that maybe Blackreach was once bigger than what we see in-game. Maybe some chambers, and possibly some larger entrances, used to exist here, but over time have caved in slash collapsed or fallen victim to flooding. Though, we'll entertain that idea more in a bit. Whatever the case, the presence of the giant and dragon had always been another mystery, and for a while, I personally simply assumed them to be mere easter eggs and nothing more. No narrative significance at all. Eventually, the Dawnguard DLC released a little over a year after Skyrim did, and it shed a bit more light on what's going on in this curious cavern. You see, while the Dawnguard expansion mostly focused on a jockey for power between a new vampire faction and those hoping to destroy said vampires, it did introduce a totally unrelated side quest called Lost to the Ages. 
which centered around the Dragonborn's efforts to help the ghost of a dead dwarven archaeologist complete her research. While this mission was largely just a series of dungeon crawls, it would actually reveal to us Blackreach's origin story, and much about the location's past. Apparently, the dwarves discovered the cave by accident when they were mining, and while it seems they initially didn't think much of it, they soon discovered that the cave was home to a significant amount of a strange, unique mineral that they would name Ethereum. It's implied that the big blue glowing rocks we can find all over Blackreach and Skyrim are those Ethereum minerals. I digress. The dwarves soon realized that this rock possessed tremendous potential at what we call tonal manipulation. For those of you who don't know, tonal manipulation in the Elder Scrolls is the concept of using sounds and vibrations, or tones, to manipulate the very fabric of reality. It's sort of like magic, but tones have absolutely nothing to do with magicka. An example of a type of tonal manipulation would be dragon shouts and the power of your thum. You're not actually using magic, but sound. The dwarves were masters with this kind of thing in their own right. Not exactly shouting, but using their tonal mastery to power machines, build great structures, and construct weapons. Well, again, this ethereum rock the dwarves found in Blackreach apparently had the power to create tools that would help them work with tones even more effectively. This is allegedly the reason they decided to start settling in the cavern, so they could mine this resource. Now, even with so much ethereum in their possession, the dwarves had a lot of trouble actually smelting it down and forging it to their liking. The stuff was supposedly next to impossible to melt. So, an alliance of various deep folk city-states soon banded together, and cooperated to build a forge and smelter hot enough that it would be capable of working with Ethereum. It's suggested that a couple entire new cities may have also been created around Blackreach to help with this, but the lore's a little vague there. Regardless, the four dwarven nations quickly succeeded in their goal, and they successfully created an Ethereum forge. Unfortunately, though, shortly after their success, the alliance fell apart, and all of the states went to war with each other over the new resource, each hoping to claim the forge and as much Ethereum as possible for themselves. Soon enough, though, their entire species would disappear all at once, and we would never learn who the victor of the conflict was. So, that's the history Dawnguard provides us on Blackreach. And while it's certainly more information than what we were told by the vanilla game, it still fails to explain everything. Like, what's going on with the dragon, and the giant, and the Nernroots? And, in fact, it even poses a couple questions of its own. You see, the Dwarven Alliance was being led by a city called Arkathans, which appears in the Dawnguard DLC way in the southern tip of the Reach. Now, the problem is that Archifams, at least in the lore and the books and the dialogue we hear, is implied to be connected to, or just above Blackreach, which it is absolutely not. Blackreach is of course located in the Pale, and Archifams is way over here, again in the Reach, far, far away. That said though, there are parts of the Arkatham's ruin that were unable to enter, thanks to either blocking debris or just impossible to pass doors. This reinforced the theory that maybe Blackreach is quite a bit bigger than what we see in Skyrim. Maybe when the dwarves were still kicking, their cavern extended far beyond what we see in the game, and really stretched below all of or most of Skyrim. However, due to various cave-ins and floods, all we see in the Elder Scrolls V is the area we're exposed to. Well, for seven years, such an idea remained simply that. An idea, a theory by the community that never really saw any substantiation. However, all of that changed in January of this year, 2020, when ZeniMax Online Studios, the developers behind the Elder Scrolls Online, 
announced that ESO's next big chapter would be taking players back to Skyrim. Specifically, the western region of the map. Yep, that's right ladies and gentlemen, Bethesda Softworks found another way to sell Skyrim to us. Todd Howard did it again. In all seriousness though, in their announcement, ZeniMax Online Studios confirmed that a big part of the new Skyrim experience they were creating would be to allow players to explore the depths of Blackreach, effectively confirming the theory that Blackreach is really so, so much bigger than what we got to see in Skyrim. It has to be if it's appearing in Western Skyrim with this expansion. Seeing as ESO takes place nearly a thousand years prior to the events of Tez V, it makes sense that they're able to show off more of the area, as the cave-ins that reduced the place's size may have been more recent than that. Moving on though, ZeniMax also promised that the Blackreach we'd get to visit in this upcoming expansion would be more than just a single dungeon, but instead an entire underworld that would constitute 40% of the new incoming playable area. Yeah, pretty huge. Now, as you can probably tell, since that announcement, parts of this expansion have released. Sort of. And they make some incredible revelations that are kind of the entire reason I've wanted to make this video. But first, quick note about how exactly ESO is releasing this sort of Western Skyrim DLC. You see, ESO chapters like this don't come out all at once. Instead, they're broken up into four pieces and released throughout the year. The first part of this DLC dropped back in March, and it didn't actually add in a whole lot of new land content. Instead, it introduced a couple of dungeons with some stories tied into the broader narrative they're hoping to tell. The second part will be unveiling the northern half of the western Skyrim map, and much of Blackreach, and it's set to release for PC players on May 26th, literally the day this video should be going live, and a week later for console players. The remaining two pieces of the DLC will come out at later dates that haven't been disclosed sometime later on in the year, but they should unlock the lower half of Western Skyrim when they do. Now, despite the northern half of the map and those parts of Blackreach not officially launching until May 26th for PC players, the Elder Scrolls Online features a public test server, which has been allowing players to explore the map and many of its quests since early April. And my gosh, is it not stunning. I will say I've never been a big fan of ESO, because I don't really like how these kinds of MMOs play, but the level designers and writers, the people who are creating the environments and stories, have been doing a stellar job, and it's very clear that the actual employees who made this went all out. But I'm getting a little carried away. Oh, you know what, real quick I probably should mention, this video isn't sponsored or made in coordination with Bethesda or ZeniMax or anything like that, this is all on my own accord. Anyway. On the public test server, once we visit Western Skyrim, we can access the new areas of Blackreach through various new, great lifts that have been added in. And incredibly, many of these new, great lifts have specifically been placed in locations that have Dwarven Rubble in Skyrim. Like, ZeniMax Online went back in Skyrim, looked for big piles of Dwarven Rubble Bethesda added around the map, and placed their elevators there which I thought was a really neat touch. Once we've descended down, we'll find that Blackreach is, while very, very beautiful, still very, very different than the one we remember. ESO's Blackreach contains multiple different biomes, areas, and many different themes. You see, the big narrative that they're trying to tell with the Elder Scrolls Online's Western Skyrim expansion is one about vampires and various clans jockeying for power. Which sounds suspiciously like Dawnguard, but I assure you this story's actually a lot better, at least in my opinion. And in the game, many of these vampiric clans have fled underground to Blackreach to build up, safe from the tyranny of the sun. But this vampire narrative aside, it's largely irrelevant to this video. There's a single quest we can find in ESO's Blackreach that very, very likely may explain 
why that Dragon Volthyriol and that giant are present in Skyrim's Blackreach. And it also gives us a lot to think about regarding why exactly the dwarves went missing in the first place. Towards the western edges of the playable cavern, which again is a massive space really, there's a small separate dwarven dungeon we can find that's currently being investigated by two Dunmer explorers who will ask us to aid in their journey. As we enter, we'll find that the place is populated by all sorts of hostile creatures that shouldn't be here. Like, I'm talking about things like manticores from elsewhere in Hammerfell, and random storm antronox and things like that. Just stuff that really shouldn't be in a dwarven ruin. As we go deeper and deeper, we'll eventually bump into an imperial man named Thaddeus Cosma, who will introduce himself to us as a time traveler from the future. Yeah, and things don't get any more normal. Thaddeus will explain that a very powerful dwarven machine in this dungeon that uses tonal manipulation has recently been acting up and is causing significant ripples in space and time, resulting in various creatures, beings, and other entities from across space and time being teleported here to Blackreach right now. It's also causing various creatures and people in Blackreach to be teleported randomly across space and time. That depends. What year is it? No, wait, don't say it. There's already enough temporal instability going on in this place. My name is Thaddeus Cosma, and I am a member of... You know what? That's not important right now. This device, however, is... Thaddeus, or Mr. Cosma, while a very eccentric personality, won't explain much about himself. He'll simply say that he's from the future, and he's come here to fix that dwarven machine, and stop it from malfunctioning. In order to do this, he asks us, the player, to run across Blackreach and locate various dwarven parts and contraptions, and bring them back to him, so he can repair the total malfunctioning device. Shortly after accepting this mission, both of the Dunmer pals we entered this dungeon with will mysteriously disappear, Thaddeus explains that they've been sent, well, somewhere in space and time, and advises us to hurry up and get him those parts back if we ever want to see our friends again. I'll spare you the specifics, but for the remainder of the quest, we just run around Blackreach getting those various items, all the while being attacked by an assortment of enemies from across Tamriel that have been teleported here. Once the items are recovered, we give them to Thaddeus, he repairs the device, and both of our friends magically reappear. Mr. Cosmo will then congratulate us on our success and thank us for our assistance before admitting that he's gotta run. He's from the future and needs to get back and doesn't like being in the past. After stating that, he'll disappear into the sunset. After this point, we can then speak to our two Dunmer friends who will state that they were teleported all across space and time. One even mentions being in Vivek City at the time the Red Mountain erupted, which is just about 20 years prior to Skyrim, or around 920 years after the events of ESO, at least. The quest is purposely very vague and mysterious, and this Cosmo character is just such an interesting figure. We know nothing about him, we don't know who he serves or what his motivations are, only that he's come to the future to save time, like a deranged Christopher Lloyd or something. No matter, we know for a fact that Blackreach has a machine capable of manipulating the space-time continuum using tomes. This is what I, and quite a few players on my Discord, suspect is probably responsible for that dragon and giant appearing in Skyrim so many years later. They weren't crammed down these tiny dwarven elevators or brought here by the Dwemer themselves or anything. They were randomly sucked from somewhere in the space-time continuum and just teleported there. Furthermore, the implications this revelation has on the entire dwarven disappearance mystery are quite significant. 
Time travel isn't exactly a foreign concept as far as the Elder Scrolls universe goes, at least broadly speaking. Dragons, the children of Akatosh, the Time God, apparently time travel quite often. But, at least up until now, we've never had any evidence at all that the dwarves were capable of time traveling or manipulating time themselves. Though, apparently, this quest suggests they must have been. Heck, maybe when the dwarves mysteriously disappeared, they didn't all just vanish or get teleported to a different type of Tamriel. Maybe they also got teleported to a different time as well. It's a very vague and uncertain concept, but the introduction of this quest is huge in its potential significance. And while it very likely could explain the presence of Ulthuriel and his giant friend, it also could explain so much more. And remember, there's still more content coming for this narrative within the next year. Before 2020 ends, two more expansions focused on Western Skyrim will be introduced, and they'll more than double the map size as well. Maybe, within those expansions, we'll get to meet this Thaddeus Cosma guy again or learn more about the weird time manipulation things the dwarves were up to. Even then though, while this Western Skyrim expansion has already taught us so much about what's really going on down in Blackreach, it seems the real mystery has just gotten even more complex. Sure, we may now have some idea why Arkathams has those locked doors we can't get past, and why there's weird piles of rubble in Blackreach and Skyrim, and heck, we may have even figured out why Volthyriol and that giant are wandering around down there. Now we need to know, what were the dwarves trying to do with time travel? Lots of fun questions. Regardless, this is where we are going to end today's video. Thanks so much for stopping by, everybody. What do you think the implications of dwarven time travel are going to be on this universe? Who is that Thaddeus Cosma guy? What's he up to? Are we going to see him again? Where's he from? I would love to know your thoughts in the comments section down below. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Again, thanks for stopping by, and hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out, everyone.